Welcome back to MX Graph Made Simple. Today we're going to be looking at MX Compact Tree Layout. As the name implies, this is a layout that's set up specifically for trees, which as we've learned elsewhere means that uh, when you follow edges from one vertex to the next, those edges should never lead you back to a vertex that you've already gone through. That's basically the definition of a tree in graphing. The other thing to keep in mind is that any vertex that's not connected to another vertex through an edge is going to be ignored by this layout. In order to give examples of this layout, I've generated data using a Python script, and the data is very random. That's going to make a difference only that when we change from one data set to another data set, it's going to be pretty random, the differences between the data. Here you have uh, examples that we've used before, a president uh, with a random number of vice presidents, each one of which have a random number of team members working underneath them. Pretty straightforward. And obviously a good simple example of a tree. So now let's take a look at some of the variables. The variables have to be laid out inside of the begin update. And here we have a list of all of the variables. I've pre-programmed them in. Um, and most of them are set to their default settings. So the first one is quite simple, layout.horizontal, and the default is true. As you saw, we had a horizontal layout, but if we turn that to false, it's going to flip the tree to become a vertical layout. We're actually going to leave it that way um, because it's easier to see some things as we move forward. Layout.invert, I didn't quite understand, so I can't tell you much about it. The resize parent group padding, parents changed, and um, layout move tree. They're mostly for more complicated graphs, oftentimes including multiple parents. Since this graph is all based on one parent, uh, they're not so much applicable. The next variable, the level distance, is going to be the distance between levels in the tree. So for example, we have one level, which is the presidential level, an additional level, which would be the vice presidential level, an additional level, which would be the team member level, um, right now it's set to 10. If we set it to 100, you see those levels um, shift. So now there's more distance between them. Now the node distance would be the distance between nodes within a level. So if we were to set that to 50 as an example, they're all now much further apart one from another, each one of the team members, for example. The reset edges I didn't quite get. The preferred horizontal edge separation. Now this only applies when you have multiple edges coming out of the same vertex. Likewise, the preferred vertical edge offset. That also only applies when you have multiple edges coming out of the same vertex. So in order to do that, we're going to change our data set a little bit. So I've rewritten the Python script 
to include multiple edges. Now let me run that script. Okay. And and now we need to include that data set. And let's take a look at it. You see the um, edges are quite discombobulated. Uh, there's ways to organize them a little bit better. I'm just going to show you the ideas. I'm not going to actually necessarily set up the organization exactly the way we might want it. Okay, so now let's try these horizontal edge separation as well as the edge offset, as well as the min edge jetty. Those would be the three areas that you're going to want to play with in order to make these um, edges a little bit easier to read. Now the differences that we're going to see are not that great because uh, what we really need to do with is play a little bit as well with the uh, where the bends in the edges are, etc, etc, to make it really perfect. But you'll get the basic idea. We're going to first change the horizontal edge separation. Change it from 15 to 25. It's obviously a preferred number. That doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to be 25 apart. Let's just take a peek at what it looks like. And we're going to navigate over here. And that's going to be the distance between multiple edges one from the other on the horizontal line. What about the vertical line? Here you can see that a little bit even more um, clearly where the distance between the vertical lines uh, have increased, perhaps making it a little bit easier to read. Just so you notice, these are two edges, both starting out in the vice president, one, both leading to number five. But now the separation between them, the vertical separation, it makes them look almost like a triangle. And then they meet once again and come back down to team number five. Now we're going to change the edge jetty. Channel buffer is not so relevant in this particular case. The edge routing is quite interesting. It's going to make a major change. So it took out all of those bends uh, in the edges. And now even though each one of these edges leading from, for example, the vice president to each one of his team members looks like a single edge. The truth is it's actually two edges. You just can't see that because we've taken off the routing. And finally, the sort edges really does not have that much to do with our example um, because all of our edges are pretty much sorted already because of the type of data that I put in. So I hope that was helpful and good luck with your compact tree layout.